so the next speaker um, is going to talk about sidewalk open source graphic rendering on protocol with private keys. So I think it's part of the reason why we have so many private keys. Um, he's very interested to hear. Uh, Dave Fletcher, um, he is the um, Blaze Nine. He is a huge maturity tech. Hi, thank you for the introduction. Um, so my name is uh, Blaise Stein, so I'll be introducing this work on uh, graphics, uh, open source graphics running on, on, on RIS-5. Uh, this is a collaboration uh, between Georgia Tech and uh, Cal Poly University. Um, so as a background, uh, graphics rendering uh, has been existing since the, the beginning of GPUs. Um, and it is currently still the larger market for uh, GPUs. Uh, although in academia, um, GPU has mainly been used for doing CUDA uh, computation, which is compute-based. Um, graphics is, uh, is involved in 3D gaming, CAD rendering, text and rendering on, on, on the desktop, and more recently on AIVR rendering as well. Um, and it has gone through several generations. Um, uh, from the 90s where we had only the fixed function pipeline, then there was the introduction of the programmable uh, shaders. And, and then today we're talking about ray tracing and, uh, and DLSS, which is pretty much AI based. The motivation for this work is to, um, is the fact that uh, graphics is, is pretty much not that much uh, 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 investigated in academia. Um, and one of the reasons for this is mainly because the, uh, the graphic stack is pretty much closed source, um, which makes the entry cost quite expensive. Um, and the existing solution that I've been employing in academia has used cycle level simulation, which kind of uh, has some uh, limitation when it comes to figure out what is the true performance of the design and, and also addressing the, 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 the efficiency. Um, and some of these API, uh, Solution also are using the old uh, APIs like OpenGL. And what we wanted to do in this work is also looking at Vulkan, which is kind of the state of the art API that is currently used today. Um, another motivation is the fact that the, the area of the GPU uh, is getting scarcer as we advance with, uh, with, with time because of the imaging uh, new pipelines that are getting added into the, into the, the processor, like ray tracing, for instance has to also use the area that exists in current FPGA. So do we still need to keep the traditional pipeline in place? Um, when we look at the uh, AI VR, um, this is an embedded domain. Um, the area is also very scarce there. Uh, do we still have to, do we, should we prioritize ray tracing over the traditional pipeline? Um, so we all were interested in looking at that space and also propose a hybrid architecture that basically uses the leverages the programmable shader to implement some of portion of the pipeline and then keep the, the fixed function unit for only the key components that are really performance critical. And uh, this is a, a, an overview of the traditional 3D graphics pipeline um, where you have a, the definition of, uh, of your model with vertices then uh, there's a, you move to a stage where you now have a, a full triangle primitive, then the rasterization stage, and then the final stage where you actually present your, your model on the, on, the, the, on the screen. And this goes through several stages, geometry stage, rasterization, and the fragment stage. In the, the yellow uh, blocks that you see there are the components that are programmable, um, and, and the white uh, boxes are the components that are fixed function that are actually using the, the fixed function, the, the area on, 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 the, on, on the hardware. And what we want to do is figure out which of these components we want to actually move into the program uh, shared stage so that we can leverage that area for some other, for some other purpose, so even increasing the number of, of cores, for instance. So I want to look at one specific area of optimization that we did, which, is, which applies to only the front end. Um, in the front end here, we have the vertex shader um, that basically takes vertices from the vertex buffer 
And then there's this part here where we actually generate the triangle primitive before it follows the next stage of the pipeline. And here, just we only have the vector shader that is programmable. Um, the first task that we ask ourselves is should we move the primitive assembly stage into software? And one of the motivations here is that a, a huge portion of this component is actually programmable. Um, a latest version of the graphics pipeline introduced um, introduce the hull shader, the domain shader, and geometric shader, which basically leaves us with only the tessellation, which is fixed function. And we just decided to just merge the whole thing into the, into the programmer stack. Um, the next st uh, step is uh, looking at the triangle setup, which is also another stage of the graphics pipeline. Uh, clipping has a uh, generally introduced new vertices, which is not, uh, which is kind of uh, expensive for uh, for hardware because you have to actually allocate those resources dynamically. Um, which is, uh, and then we also have the vector, the normal vector computation, which is also a step um, that requires computing the dot product using floating points. Um, and this component are now part of the crit performance critical path. So for this reason, we also decided to migrate those into, uh, into, the, into the shader, the, the program member shader. And then the last, the last uh, step of the front end right before assessation is the tiling, when you break the, you break the primitive into different tiles so that they can actually execute in parallel in the pixel shader. And here we have to compute the, the edge equation uh, which is also an interesting component that is also used by the, that is also, ca ca that can be used for doing the, cool, the cooling operation. Um, and one of the motivation for moving this stage also into software is so that we can reduce the primitive size, the, the, the size of the primitive that is needed to send the data to the rasterization phase, which is the last component um, of, of this front end. But the decision why we decided not to move the rasterizer is mainly because the rasterization is expensive. Um, we are talking about a computation that is done on a per pixel basis and also on a per triangle basis. Uh, if you're looking at a, a 4K, a traditional 4K image, this is like 8.3 millions of pixels that you have to, that you have to traverse. This is um, the final, um, 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 micro, uh, the final uh, um, diagram that shows the difference between the traditional pipeline and what we are proposing, which is this hybrid architecture where we have kept only four of the stages in the shader pipeline, in the program, uh, four of the stages in a fixed function pipeline and the remaining part in the programmable, uh, in the programmable side. We're also introducing a, a high throughput hardware rasteri rasterizer, uh, which basically uses um, a, a recursive descent uh, algorithm where we can break the triangle uh, by half at every single iteration until we reach a certain point where we can actually configure the last tile that we want to unroll. And the unrolling mechanism here allows us to kind of figure out the best design when it comes to area and performance. Um, and then the number of raster slices that the rasterizer implement allows us to basically scale the performance of this rasterizer. The macro, the final macro architecture of this, of this GPU um, is basically scalable. Uh, we use Vortex as a baseline architecture, um, and then we have introduced the concept of uh, core, socket, and cluster that allows us to scale the micro architecture to a larger number of core without having to affect much of the, of the, of the clock, the clock speed. Um, and the sharing of the components at the cluster level allows us to basically decide how much area we want to leverage inside the, the design. If you want to have maybe a single rasterizer that serves 16 cores or two rasterizers serving 16 cores and so on. On the software side, we had to introduce uh, an ISC extension to RIS-5 so that we can actually have the, the shader, the program actually access the, um, the hardware block that we have implemented. Uh, basically, we introduced three uh, um, ISA extension, three instruction, one for rasterization, one for the render output unit. This is presenting the, this is the component that actually present, blends the final pixel on the destination target and the interpolation of the, of the pixel um, in, the, in, the, in the pixel shader. 
The other change is at the compiler level. Because we have a hybrid architecture, um, we are now introducing a little bit more software into the programmable shader. And, and the, the additional software that we add in the programmable shader has branches, diversion branches. Um, so this has kind of uh, increased the importance of actually automating the, the, whole pro, the whole diversion process in the compiler. So we, we added support in LNVM for a hardware-based um, um, a hardware-based divergence. Um, LNVM currently has a software implementation for AMD, but, but no support for a hardware-based hardware hardware -based divergence. And uh, part of the implementation is, is, to, is basically instrumenting simple if-then um, if case statement and also addressing the loop case. Um, more details about this optimization is, is included in, in the paper. For the evaluation, um, we, uh, we actually target an FPGA. Um, so this work, it was critical for us to look at FPGA and also have a design that can actually give us a relatively good frame rate so that we can actually, um, we can actually use realistic ben benchmark. One of the challenges that I did not mention earlier about doing research in graphics uh, using cycle of a simulation is the latency. Uh, if you, you pretty much cannot execute a full game using cycle of estimation, it will take you days. Um, so we can actually, um, we were able to instantiate the two cores on the FPGA and give a reasonable um, frame rate between fi uh, 50 and 100 uh, frames per second, um, which falls within a, a, a relatively good space where we can actually start uh, exercising realistic, realistic benchmark. Um, and then the benchmark actually comes from Power VR, and uh, there are two benchmarks that we have included in this set that, uh, that is basically created by, created by us. The, the other observation that we made is actually the cost of the raster slice, um, which falls within 10% um, of the entire area cost. Um, the, we have instantiated four ROPs render output unit, um, and then all four of them only utilize four, uh, seven percent of, of the of the the FPGA area um, and the eight te uh, texture memory unit eight texture memory unit um, the other uh, information that we also I want to show here is that we had to also figure out what is the correct tile size for the rasterizer um, if the size of the tile is too big um, it increases the, the, the number of descent, the number of subdivision of the tile that has to take place on the, on the rasterizer. And if it is too small, it also increases the size of the tile buffer, the entire buffer that has to be sent, sent to the rasterizer. So we kind of find a sweet spot of 32, 32 by the two tiles. In the conclusion, we, we also investigated that software hardware rendering space. Like how much should we put in software and how much we put in, in hardware. And we, we, we look at, the, so we, uh, we um, evaluate the scenarios where we turn off rasterization and then we keep everything else in, in software or we turn out the render output unit to actually see what's the benefit of moving something in software versus keeping it in, in, keeping in hardware. And then we realize that actually the render output unit had a much better value um, as a fixed function unit compared to rasterization to compare to the rasterizer. In terms of the research application here, is, uh, there's opportunity here with this framework to do compiler optimization for RISC-5 shaders. Um, there's also ray tracing. This is also an area that we're currently looking at uh, AI VR graphics hardware uh, uh, exploration, um, including even uh, AI-based acceleration for, for graphics, like DLSL, for instance. Um, for this, uh, uh, the the paper discussed many other aspects of this work, including the, the Vulkan graphic stack, um, and also some of the other hardware components that we implemented as part, as part of this project. Um, with that, I will, I will end here. Thank you very much.